This extraordinary woman has been on Broadway countless times and in theaters all over America and abroad. Uh, she came here to make her debut 25 years ago, and so she decided to stay. It was a long weekend. The most recently, uh, she, most recently she appeared in Side by Side by Sondheim, and I saw her, and of course she was wonderful. I've never seen her be anything but wonderful. Prior to that, she created a leading role, as you know, on Broadway in a little night music, which she repeated in the film version. But most of all, you know her as pure gold on a television talk show, Gingold, of course. Here's Hermione Gingold. <laughs> See, if you had flown in a plane like I told you to, you would never have had that accident. She had an accident on a train because she's scared to fly. <laughs> I know. Now, now I'm going to fly always. Now, the accident wasn't even on the train. No, You've I... been drinking and you fell over your baggage. Uh, darling, Is that a... <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't, A, I don't drink. Anymore? I never have. You're thinking the other Hamad. No, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. You've sipped a little uh, Dubai. White wine. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Uh, I got out of the train. You don't smoke anything no. funny, do you? No, cigars ah. sometimes. Ah. I got out of the train at half past two in the morning. It was pitch dark, but I got out of the train beautifully. Half past two in Kansas City, and there was an old iron railway truck. And I didn't notice it. I can't think why not. You didn't back off the train, did you? No, and I fell over and fractured my knee and dislocated my shoulder. And this is the first time I've been out, and I may drop to pieces at any moment. No. If, yes. if anything comes off, you just tell me, and I'll put it right back on. Oh, that's wonderful. That is real, isn't it? Oh, it's all real, yes. Wow. The tiger's eye. But Hermione, then you see in newspapers all across America was this great story. Right in the Los Angeles Times, I woke up one morning and there I was reading the paper and it is a story about Hermione and her accident. And at the end of it, the reporter said to her, well, we hope you'll be all right. And the quote says, I do hope Merv Griffin will phone me. <laughs> well, I grabbed for the phone. <laughs> well, I tell you why. It was the most extraordinary thing. At least it wasn't extraordinary, but I think you'll be pleased to hear it. Yeah. Wherever I went, and I went all over America in five months by bus, playing in Side by Side. They heard about our romance? <laughs> no, darling, I wish it was. Is was. the child here? No. Um, they didn't know me from the theater. They didn't know me from films, because right down in the Midwest, the, the bottom of it all, what is it, Deep South or something? At the, bottom, they... the bottom of the Midwest would be the Deep South, yes. <laughs> That's I hope they're not watching. <laughs> they eat nothing but grits. Grits, it? yes. <laughs> and uh, they had never heard That's of old anything mush. but the Merv Griffin Show. They all knew me because of the Merv Griffin Show. Did they think you talk funny? Uh, they didn't say so. <laughs> <laughs> but the wonderful thing was they all came up and said, thank you so much for coming to our city as if I was doing it for free. <laughs> And did you say I just <laughs> fell into town for a few minutes? Yes, I just Were you treated in. well in the hospital? My dear, it was a divine hospital. What Filthy it? food, but A divine. disco hospital? No, but it was run, it was a, a sort of a religious hospital until I went there. And Could I ask the denomination? Uh, I never found out. But they wanted but now, wait a minute, let me ask you what the people looked like. Did any of the girls have on veils? No, but there were lots of men in sort of curious robes tied round their waist. <laughs> Did anybody rooms. ask to hear your confession <laughs> if they had two weeks? <laughs> no. Uh -huh. And Thank would you. you have confessed? No, I'm a very private person. Uh -huh. I may tell you that I'm always being asked to write my memoir. Well, you should do it. I would never do it. Why? For one thing, I think, unless you're very, very, very important, but I mean very, the sort of top, like, well, I, I don't know, Queen Elizabeth or Prince Charles. Anyhow, their memoirs wouldn't be very interesting. Uh, you don't, you don't think the they're other... having a good time? <laughs> 
I don't know what to discuss it. Oh. Um, my life has been very curious. <laughs> But I don't want to talk about it. I want to keep it in here. I don't but want to think share. of all the fun we're missing by not knowing what I it's been like. I don't believe one should. I believe, for one thing, it does harm to a lot of people but who I are know, still but living. You mustn't forget that not all my past is dead. All your husbands. <laughs> all your husbands are, aren't they? <laughs> all my husbands. They're gone. Aren't they departed? Well, I, I only had two. Mm, two. Come on, come on. And uh, they're both dead. Ah, well. Write like the book. No, I would never do it. It wasn't mushrooms they died of, was it? No, I think it was grief. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> you do know that story about the man who had five wives, and his friend said, well, how, how they died? He said, well, the first four died of mushroom poisoning, and the fifth one died of a broken neck. <laughs> and so he said, well... How did she get the broken neck? And he said, well, she wouldn't eat the mushrooms. You know. <laughs> so, not that I'm suggesting. No. no, no, no. No, no. But it's very funny. My last husband was the funniest of them. Huh. And I met him at a party in New York just some years before he died. We were divorced then. Mm -hmm. And when I left him, he was very poor. And I was earning more money than he was, so I didn't ask for alimony. But then he became very rich. And I went up to him at this party and said, Darling, how about some alimony? And he said, Oh, no, I couldn't take money from a woman. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that... <laughs> That's the title of your book. I can't take alimony well, from a woman. You I should write it, Hermione. I can't, because oh, I can't, because my hand good. is out of order Well, you, but your lips aren't. No, but I can't dictate. I have to... You know, I've written three books but I've had to write them, and then I have to dictate them because no one can understand my mm. writing or my spelling come to that. So, uh, Is there anybody No, what I will do... Right now? Yes. Huh? What? No! Oh, oh now, come on, don't... <laughs> no, is, I'm not going to tell you. Is it the same one from California? Yes. Oh, that's a continuing romance. Good. Yes. Good. <laughs> it's very good. What I will do... Yes. <laughs> what I will do, darling... I've thought of a very good thing to do. I will write my own eulogy. Is it eulogy? Oh, yes, for your funeral? Yes, and when, uh, you see, I, how Prince will see that I'm put away properly, <laughs> because he's a doll, and he always gives his actors a lovely do at the theater. Oh, well, count on me. I'll be there. Good. Yes. I, Who I, will read it, though? There'll be no a... one will read it. No, it had to be. A, there... I will record it. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Oh, that would be too gruesome. I'm going gruesome. to do my own. I'm going to say, darling, it's lovely to see you sitting there all dry-eyed. <laughs> <laughs> and gossiping. You know, I'll make them feel... Bad. I've already recorded mine. Have you? Yep. And it's going to be played at my funeral. It's very simple. What is it? Ladies and gentlemen, I will not be right back after this message. <laughs> But yes, we will. We'll be right back after this message. You like that one? Excuse me, I see you're buying one of those.